Welcome back to Only on Vinyl, and uh, this video we're going to be taking a look at and trying to repair an Iowa HS-F07, and this is the Walkman uh, that is almost identical to the one used in the movie Back to the Future by Michael J. Fox. That's in the scene where he's uh, pretending to be a man from space to convince his younger father to uh, take his mother out on a date to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. I'm going to flash a few pictures on screen here because my son and I have been very, very big fans of this movie. Um, I saw this movie in the theater when it came out originally um, when I was a teenager. Uh, always loved this movie. I uh, have the soundtrack on vinyl, of course, uh, and on CD. And I have the 12 inch single of the uh, Huey Lewis and the News theme song, The Power of Love, which has uh, three remixes on it. Um, and my son and I uh, actually did get a chance to come in contact with an actual um, DeLorean time machine replica. And that was a few years back. And so here's a quick little video of that. So anyway, yeah, my son's been a big fan of that, and um, uh, I believe it was his senior year in high school, he had, uh, at his high school, an Enchantment Under the Sea dance. And here's some pictures of him when he went to that dance. I actually hunted on eBay, and I found the identical pattern. Uh, I, I don't remember what it's called, but it wasn't exactly herringbone, but um, the exact pattern of thread that was the jacket that Michael J. Fox wore in that scene of the movie of the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. So I got him the shoes, the jacket, uh, I bought him a Casio um, calculator watch and a tie to sort of match and he basically had the exact outfit of Michael J. Fox. Now he's a little bigger now so he doesn't really fit into that but we're saving that. We actually have a couple of posters from the 25th anniversary release of the movie in theaters. Uh, it was shown digitally and it looked amazing. Anyway, um, found this on eBay and it looks to be in really, really nice condition. And I know restored um, Iowa's like this, they go for big money because these have become collectible because of the association with the uh, Back to the Future film. So this is not the all um, chrome one. This is like the, I guess what they call the black version. And this is not really black, it's kind of gray here. But it still looks really good. And um, so I went with that because uh, the other ones are really difficult to find and expensive too. Um, I mean, the, the, the ones I saw on eBay at the time of making this video, there were a couple of them that were actually um, in working condition uh, between 700 and Fifteen hundred dollars. Um, the one that was fifteen, I believe, they were in the original packaging. But I got this one, and the guy in the auction said that um, it was dead. But um, I didn't want to give up because he had a really good price on it. And um, so, opening the battery I, uh, compartment here, I asked him to double check, and he was nice enough to do exactly what I'm doing now. And he put some batteries in. This runs on um, AAA batteries, by the way. And upon closing it, I noticed these lights come on. Um, there is power here. The unfortunate thing, though, is, is that it's always on. You can hear the motor spinning. So obviously, I know the belt isn't working because we're not getting anything spinning inside here. But when I slide it into pause right here, the motor stops, but the lights stay on. So what I am concerned about is that there's something else wrong with this, that when you hit the stop button, something is not telling the Walkman to actually stop the motor. However, that could be a function of the belt having been busted and not fully engaging a cycle. So, 
Um, we're going to take this guy apart and see what we can do. Uh, I'm going to take the batteries out. Oh, and by the way, again, um, when you're hunting for a used Walkman, really check to see if your battery compartment is clean, the terminals. This one is. I see a little bit of um, just normal uh, oxidation there, but you know, I took a flashlight, looked inside, it's clean. So uh, I'm not concerned about that. But to get this guy apart, um, it looks to be like there's two screws here, two here, two on the bottom, two on the side with the controls, here and here. And I believe the back panel will come off if that is all that there is but it is a total of eight screws so i think i've got the right screwdriver here um and i want to mention that because when i worked on the sony walkman i didn't have all the same screwdriver i mean i was over the course of you know taking those apart a couple of times i didn't have um the exact right screwdriver and that's really important on these really tiny tiny screws because you can strip them out and um, I didn't document this, but um, I did strip out two screws on the uh, WM30 Walkman. That was the black uh, Sony Walkman. And unfortunately, I had a hell of a time getting that stripped screw out. And here's a, something that I just came up with as an idea. I'm not sure if anybody else has done this or demoed it, but um, I took a soldering iron and the screw that was stuck was on the bottom, uh, you know, similar to this one here. And what I did was um, I used some uh, metal foil tape to protect the Walkman and just then cut out a little hole for access to the screw. And I used a soldering iron and I carefully dabbed a little bit of solder and melted it onto the screw head that was stripped out and kept building that up and up and up and up until I had something to grab onto with a pair of pliers that I could actually then twist and remove that stripped out screw. And because I had the, oops, the other WM10, and because I had the other WM10 that had the bad uh, misaligned head, I was able to salvage a screw off of that one so that way um, I wasn't stuck with a uh, missing screw or a stripped out screw. So anyway, that's, um, if that can help somebody out in the future, hopefully it can because yeah, there's nothing more frustrating than stripping out a really tiny screw so okay so notice there's other screws here but these are for the door and for the hinge so i'm not going to touch those i'm just going to try and get the ones that are associated with the back panel so i believe that this is all one piece it looks like okay so i managed to get all the screws out there's one here that was just really stubborn don't know why, but it was. Uh, finally got it out. Um, but I'm looking at this now, trying to figure out which direction. Now, because we've got controls on this side, and I'm going to say that the back panel is going to need to come off from this side and lift up this way so that we slide it back like that and we clear this jack here and these controls that's what I'm thinking um, let's see if I'm right I'm trying to remember now how this comes off we got to unlatch that and that might actually give me a little bit of a way to have let me see if I can pry it up there hey that worked pretty good just uh, pop the tiny screwdriver in there, pop that up, that worked, okay. Now I have watched a video, um, it was not narrated, but I did watch a video from a few years ago that uh, showed this Walkman, or this cassette player, sorry, Walkman is a 
Sony owned name. Okay, so I'm going to slide it. Oh, interesting. So those screws did not need to come out. Okay. So there we have it. The innards of the Iowa. What model is this again? The H s f07 and we will see of course the obvious that this thing is in need of a new belt because this belt has turned to goo and or has broken at least we can see that okay um okay so as I've done in the uh, previous videos for the uh, Sony Walkman, I am going to get out my trusty um, tweezers and so forth. And we're going to have a go at removing as much of this belt as we can. Um, see what comes off yeah it's kind of sticky as you can see it's sticking to the um, tweezers here I'm trying to get it off in as much large pieces as I can because it's such a hassle cleaning this stuff off incidentally the uh, video that I watched um, about the belt replacement on this particular player. Um, the guy did the cleanup um, on the inside ridges of the gears here using a piece of string that he soaked in alcohol. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. Um, I was just afraid of getting that string kind of, you know, too tight in there and jammed to where it's just not gonna help things because you're gonna end up tangling it so um, yeah I'm not doing that but this thing is gooey gooey messy I it's yeah, it's pretty bad so I'm just gonna do my best here to try and get as much of this crap off of here as I can um, unfortunately, as I take a look here, it looks like it's around the, the, the plastic gears here as well. Um, yeah, it's in here too. And over here, this is the motor. So there's the drive shaft of the motor right there. It's just a nightmare. Okay, well, there's not much I can do. Un unlike the Sony, where I can take parts off easily, um, this one is not going to be um, easily done where you're taking parts off to soak them and clean them. So uh, this is just going to be a gooey mess of a cleanup here. So anyway, uh, I'll be at this for a while. What I'd like to do um, is take like a bottle cap here with isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 70%. I'm going to dip my finger in there to clean some of this belt residue because I got it all over my fingers already. Um, and I use the uh, alcohol to help clean the uh, belt. So I'm dipping my um, tweezers in there and then while they're wet, running it along here to uh, try and clean this belt off of this gear here. And it is super, super messy here. This is like the worst one I've had to do. Um, I may just go ahead now and skip this step because it's just bad. It's really bad there. I'm going to use a Q-tip, soak the head of the Q-tip, go ahead and just run it over. Look at that just comes right off but I mean it's it stains it's just it's really bad stuff so 
what I found is that the, the alcohol um, helps dissolve this stuff, but it also causes it to smear like you would not believe. So you really want to try and get as much of this stuff off of here as you can before doing um, the alcohol thing because, I mean, you, you make one swipe and that Q-tip is done. It's just saturated with that stuff. I'm able to get underneath the board enough with the X-Acto blade to kind of scrape some stuff out from that way. Then the other thing I'm doing is uh, similar to what I did with the um, flattening of the Q-tip head. I'm actually taking this one and I'm twisting it a bit and elongating it. So that way um, it has more of a pointed tip. I'm just kind of rolling it in between my um, thumb and index finger. So what that will do is give me a more pointed tip to kind of get in there with a soaked Q-tip and clean that belt. Okay, so um, I did order the official belt for this cassette player. However, um, it hasn't arrived yet and I really wanted to get this done for my son for a Christmas gift. And the reason the belt hasn't arrived is that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making this video in um, mid-December 2022. And when you look on eBay, most of the sellers for um, replacement belts for cassette um, are located in the Ukraine. Given the situation with Russia and the Ukraine right now, I'm just not comfortable ordering anything uh, from them. Um, you know, even if it's only three dollars or seven dollars or whatever, um, I'm just not confident that would it would ever arrive. Um, and unfortunately. The only other seller that had a belt for this particular Iowa was located in the UK. And days after I ordered, the UK Postal Service went on strike. Now, according to eBay, um, the belt did get shipped. And because they sent it um, standard international shipping, I have no way of knowing whether the belt is actually ever going to arrive um, this month. The estimated time for arrival was supposed to be um, yesterday, the 15th of December. We are now the 16th of December, and I don't have a belt. So um, my son actually has a collection of different belts. We're going to try this one and just see what happens. Okay, so the belt that I had, um, it was too thick. And um, yeah. So what I ended up doing was um, I still had that old... The first WM10 that I tried to fix that has a bad um, head uh, mechanism. And I took the belt off of that because it was a brand new belt. You know, I had just stuck it on there, um, bought it new, bought the belt new, that is. So it seems to fit good on this Walkman as well. Uh, the mechanisms are very similar. Um, the belt uh, looks like it fits. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick test here and put a couple batteries in. See if I can get this thing to fire up. Okay, here we go. Here is play. Okay, that seems to have some issues here. I don't know what that clicking is there. Maybe it's because the tape is not in. Um, so, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know what that is, if it's a function of the auto reverse. Um, but let me go ahead and, and um, I'll snap the cover back on. And we'll try this again and see what happens. Okay, got the batteries in. Um, put a tape in and let's hit play and see what happens.
Okay, so it's working. Um, unfortunately, it's playing very slow. Um, I'll pop it open again and see what's going on, but um, the um, rewind looks like it's going okay. Oh, this is this is the stop button here. Um, this is the fast forward. So, because it is playing slow, uh, the first thing I'm going to check is uh, any drag on the belt. Uh, see if it's maybe that belt is just not going to work on this one. Uh, and then the next thing I'll check is I'll, I'll look in the. Um, uh, service manual. I have a copy of it as a PDF that I downloaded a few weeks ago, and there might be an adjustment. Uh, the Sony's have those, um, and it's basically a motor adjustment. Okay, so I watched another video of a functioning uh, player, same model, to try and figure out why the auto reverse wasn't working, and I figured it out. Okay, so this might be kind of hard to see, but there is a spring right here. And this spring controls tension on this little arm here. And this lever here, it keeps tension down on it. Okay? And that is required because this arm, as this gear rotates, you'll see some gaps in there where this arm locks into it. And that dictates the, the rotation um, of a gear behind it to give you um, playback in both directions. So. If I push this, okay, batteries, I'm, I'm holding the batteries in by hand. You'll now see the lever, and that, every time I push the play button in, it's supposed to hit that and change direction. Now, the problem that I'm having is, is that spring is not in place perfectly as it was from the factory. So, uh, I need to bend some more tension onto this spring. Let me zoom in and see if I, how close I can get to that. Okay, there we go. Um, let me see if I can add some additional light here. Okay, yeah, that's better. So, this fine little wire here is part of a spring. And this one right behind it is they're connected and it's basically it goes up loops once around a little peg there and then comes back this way but as we can see this one got bent somehow and we're not getting the proper amount of tension here or here and if i move the belt out of the way you can actually see where this spring got bent right there see and it's supposed to come straight out here so it's been very difficult i've been trying with some tweezers um some flat paddle type tweezers to get in there and try and bend that spring back into place to try and restore auto reverse playback on this okay uh hopefully the heater in the background isn't going to distract too much but uh here's an update yes i have manage to bend the spring back to give enough tension so that auto reverse is working properly now. So that's great news. Um, but then I still had the issue of playback speed. So took a look at the service manual and it wasn't really helpful. I, it, it, I, I did see that there was a mention of some sort of adjustment. So the motor is right here and there happens to be a screw, a flathead screw um, right here and lo and behold with a jeweler screwdriver that changes your speed I'm just kind of earballing it, I guess. Um, it seems to work okay. That sounds pretty good. 
You could get a, a test tape, a test tone, check it with like a guitar tuner. Um, I could do that. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to button this thing up and give it a final test. Okay, another update. Uh, what I did was I put some more of this lubricant, this grease, on this lever here where it catches the spring because if it encounters too much friction, it pushes the spring out of the little notch where it sits. And we want it to glide through there as it... Uh, moves when you hit the play button. So here we go. It's in play mode. It engages auto reverse. So it seems to be working. Now, I noticed a lot of uh, flutter noise as far as like it just wasn't playing stable. So a uh, couple things that I've done on the WM10s again, uh, the WM10 and WM30 off camera was uh, I got some of this um, sewing machine oil. And uh, what I do is I put a tiny, tiny drop here and on the motor drive itself, uh, the spindle here, but just a tiny drop. And uh, I had it running, uh, you know, just to get that to seep in and I'm going to wipe that off just a bit. And uh, the other thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to hit stop. Okay, and it stopped properly. Yay. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out for one. I'm going to eject the tape. And I'm going to carefully, very, very carefully, I'll take the batteries out there, uh, put a drop here on each of the uh, spindles that turn the tape because, uh, you know, I, I have no idea how long this thing has been sitting. It may have been sitting for a long time. And uh, any old lubricant, again, any grease or anything that may have dried uh, could be uh, inhibiting smooth playback. So I'm going to drop a little bit off camera here on my X-Acto blade and just drop a tiny dot of the oil onto those. just so that I got uh, some stuff in there. Um, and what I'll do is just kind of play it again, cycle it without a tape, get that uh, lubricant in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll clean the tape heads and the uh, cap stands and so forth um, and the pinch rollers. Uh, to give it a good thorough cleaning because I, that I haven't done yet. All right, I got the back panel on. I got uh, all the cleaning done for uh, tape heads, etc. So let's give it a try. Let's try auto reverse. So I think I got it working. <laughs> <laughs> 